Good morning, Grace. Pastor Randy Remington, who's the president of our denomination, called us to 21 days of prayer and fasting beginning on January 1st. We're in the 10th day of that fast, and we're almost halfway there. Daniel, in chapter 9 of his prophetic book, had gotten some bad news. And in chapter 10, in verses 2 and 3, he says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning for three weeks. I ate no delicacies, no meat or wine entered my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all for the full three weeks. Daniel fasted and prayed for 21 days so that his prayers for his people and their land would be heard and answered. He didn't starve himself, but rather, as the King James puts it, he ate no pleasant thing. He did not distract himself from his mourning with food, but rather poured his distress into prayer. God powerfully answered his prayer. So we have had plenty of disturbing news over the last year, over the last week. Um, and my word to you this morning is that God is waiting to hear our prayer. He wants to answer. He's waiting for us to set aside our distractions and fully engage with him in our grief and concern. He's looking to see if we will set aside our delicacies, our entertainments, our self-soothing behavior, and come honestly before him with our hurts, fears, and grief. This morning, I want for us to pray Isaiah 55, 8 through 13 over ourselves and our nation. Let me read from Isaiah. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills before you will break forth into singing and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the th thorn shall come up the cypress instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. So here's how I want us to pray this morning. Psalm 103 says, um, the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We just read that our thoughts, the thoughts that we think, are not God's thoughts. And our ways are not God's ways. So let's pray for Revelation so that we would know God's thoughts and know the way in which he would like us to go. But let's also pray that God would grant us humility in our thoughts and in our ways. Saul of Tarsus thought that he was doing God's work in persecuting the church. Jesus met him on the road and 
brought a little correction to his thinking. Paul later says, for now we see through a glass dimly, but then we shall see face to face. Pray that we're on God's side rather than that he's on our side. The prophet Malachi reminds us to walk humbly with our God. Too many of us walk with a swagger. God is not our bodyguard. Let's pray that we are worthy to be his servant. So the second thing that I would like for us to pray is that we would be praying the words of God. That these would be words that accomplish what he intends. Words of life and provision. And thirdly, that our prayers are for God's renown, for his glory, so that the people will know that there is a great and mighty God who loves his people. I'd like you to look at this verse as you pray, Isaiah 55, 8 through 13. And pray over these three prayer points for the next minute or so. I'll come back and, and close us in a time of prayer. Thank you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that it is powerful and effective. We repent this morning on behalf of ourselves, our families, and our nation. We repent of thinking thoughts unworthy of you. We repent of walking in ways that are unworthy of your son, Jesus, who is the incarnate word. Lord, help us to know your word, to speak your word, to pray your word, and to live out your word. Lord, may we be people of your word. Finally, Lord, we pray that in all our prayers, you would be glorified. We pray that you would be glorified in salvation, in healing, in deliverance, in miracles, and in provision. Father, we thank you that you change our circumstances. We thank you for the joy of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you that you lead us by your peace. Amen.